Hello again, hackers burning the midnight oil. My name is Jax, and on this It Takes a Village stream, we completed the most popular easy machine on HTTP Labs. The good stuff. This quick video is actually just a breakdown of two hours from that stream where Gar goes over a blind SQL injection, and additionally, we learned some really cool stuff about binaries and processes. Remember to head over to Twitch and follow us here if you want to keep seeing this content. I enjoy making it. I hope you enjoy watching it. Also, go show the creators some love. They're our Season 7 champions. Nice. So hold on to your butts. We're about to do a write-up. Let's go rewind all the way back to the beginning. Car. Doing the rewind. And appreciate that. I'm going to, uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to do, I'm going to say anything from now on. This is, this is all you do. Super simple. Apparently, I forgot my output. Got rid of port 80 because we did the, uh, the revert of the box. But we did initial nmap scan and we saw that port 22 and port 80 were open. Did the quick top 1000. We could do a server scan in the background just to see if there's anything additional there. But we did a quick one just so we can have something manual to tackle and we saw that there was a web server on port 80. Pretty static. Not a lot going on from the, the actual HTML when we looked at burp. So we went from there and we did, while we did directory enumeration, we did robots.txt and saw the write-up directory was accessible. Or at least it was listed within the robots.txt file. We were able to hit it and we saw uh, different links. And in the links they had index, question mark, page there was a page url parameter query string parameter and we tried path reversal just by doing dot forward slash to see if that was something it recognized any type of path modification related syntax in that case it didn't so from there we went ahead and looked at the actual source and we saw that there was a i think a little meta tag if i remember right that showed uh it right up here yeah there was a little meta tag that showed cms made simple so we went and grabbed that and we looked to see is cms made simple some type of cms that's accessible that has a vulnerability in this case it did we we saw exploit DB had a SQL injection um, POC in relation to CVE 2019-9053. Uh, 2019 was around the time the box was made. So we went ahead and gave it, a, gave it a try. We had to really dive into it a little bit to modify the script based off of some library issues. We got it running. Um, and basically it's a time-based blind SQL injection on the module interface.php file. So we, you could, we ran the script and we were able to actually grab the password hash and the salt and crack it using Hashcat, which, is, which turned out to be a lot quicker than using the script um, but you can see on the right here in burp we actually just copied the actual resource itself and some of the path itself so in this case this sql injection vulnerability the actual parameter it's vulnerable is m1 underscore id list and so when we use this specific string here this this payload what's happening is it terminates the the first part of the query here and then there's a select statement that says hey sleep for seven seconds if the username in CMS users of the user with an ID of one st starts with the letter J. Because if I do a percent six A, which is this right here, hex six A two five, and I URL decode this, it's the letter J. And so when we send this, you can see it actually takes seven seconds for it to respond. So that was the nature of the SQL injection vulnerability here. We confirm it seven seconds. If you look in the bottom right, 7.3 mil, or 7,309 milliseconds. So we got that, cracked the hash, and we got this password, Ray K J nine. So we SSH as the user JKR to the server, did our initial new enumeration of a lot of things and we didn't really see anything you know ever the permissions were good sudo as a binary was just gone and so we ran we went ahead and ran pspy to see if there were any running processes happening and what we noticed every time you ssh the server This, this executes essentially every time the user S a user SSHs the server and it sets the path using a ENV. It sets the path to user local SBIN, user local bin and runs the binary run parts. And if we look at the user JKR, if we do ID, I'll throw it up here so it's a little easier to see. If we do ID, we can see the user is actually part of the staff group. We didn't know what that meant to begin with, but we tried to touch files, user, local, SBIN in those specific directories and we saw we could do it. So we were able to touch those files or touch a file in that directory, but we couldn't list the contents of that directory. Process of, okay, if this is running as the root user every time a user SSHs, we should be able to write or create a malicious run parts binary, throw it into sbin or bin or user local bin. And when that script executes, every time the user SSHs, it should execute with root permissions, like a normal uh, like path hijacking vulnerability. So if you look in temp, we have, uh, we have the bash, well, we'll actually remove bash so you can see it. Uh, I can't do that because I'm not root. Dot forward slash bash tag p rm temp bash exit. Okay, so we can see we have run parts. So we cat run parts. What it does is it copies bin bash into temp bash and then sets it with the set UID permission. So what we did was we copied run parts into user local s bin and to user local bin, and we went ahead and SSH. Let's go ahead and pspy just for good measure. We'll pspy it again so you can see it. We'll SSH back to the server using the password. 
you can see that this SH, this, this whole script runs again. We'll kill piece by LS stack LA temp. You'll see that we have bash with the set UID permissions created by root. And now we can just do dot forward slash bash tack P for privileged. And now we are root and that's pretty much it. So in, in all of this, what we kind of, we did in general was we did enumeration. We, we found um, our entry point, which was a CMS. We exploited a CVE. The important part about that CVE was it being uh, an SQL injection that was a time-based SQL injection. And then from there, we had utilizing that to get hashes and usernames. We cracked it using Hashcat. Once we had that, there was a password that was consistent from what we had cracked there to the SSH that we then utilized. And from there, we understood that well, we didn't have sudo and then we uh, the binary parts i'm still going to be very rusty at explaining actually the one thing that i didn't catch was the piece by uh, one i think one thing about piece by i don't know the intricacies of how it does it i know it uses like proc scans if i remember correctly but it, it's a it's a tool that essentially scans for new processes so existing processes and new processes out as they're um as they're spawned and then shows you those processes as they occur okay. rather than um you just doing like a, a ps to see the processes as a, as a current point at a current point in time this Perfect. runs and this runs consistently to show any newly spawned processes and so yeah. then whenever we we uh spawn that process in particular that we needed to change we changed the the binary for that so that when it ran it instead ran um, this here. Yeah, the exactly. Run parts. So what Thank you. Is, run parts is what yeah, I was looking for. Yeah, run parts specifically. So what happens is when it's running run parts, we're not yeah. referencing it by an absolute file path. We're not doing user, like whenever we run anything, if I do like uh, echo test, you know, I'm not, if I actually do which echo, echo is actually bin echo. And so echo is a binary that exists in the bin directory. But because bin is in our path, what's happening is the it's looking for the binary echo within our path and if it exists it'll run that binary and so that's what it's doing with run parts it's looking in user local s bin user local bin user s bin user bin for run parts and if it exists in there that's what it's running and so that just kind of it's just it's just convenience you know for users so they don't have to type in the full the, the like the absolute path of every single binary and so right. because of that that uh because we had root, uh, permissions as the staff user to write to these directories we were able to create a malicious run parts binary and then because we were able to do that or when we ssh and this script ran it grabbed the malicious run parts and executed that instead of the intended run parts so yeah if you are some of the dedicated few who have made it this far thanks thank you please leave a comment in the comment section below so that i can make this experience better for you the next time you come here because that's what matters to me most is that you are getting something out of this until next time take care